All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Houston Rockets Daily. I saw a tweet earlier today saying, like, it was kind of like a Rockets account tweeting out uh, player grades for everyone on the team. Jay Sean Tate was one of them. And, um, you know, A, B, C, or D, comment down below what you would grade Jay Sean Tate as this past season. But I rated him a C. I rated him a C. There were like 30% of people gave him a C. And I think like 50%, the majority was a B grade, maybe a B minus. I think I'm more in the B minus C plus camp. Um, here's the thing with Jay Sean. Next year's contract year. So, you know, I'm definitely not trying to trade Jay Sean Tate unless you had the ability to kind of package him in a trade to acquire a star or star like talent. Jay Sean, let me tell you his stats this season. 11.8 per game, 5.4 rebounds, 2.8 assists, 0.9 steals, 0.5 blocks, shot 50% from the field, uh, 31% from downtown. If you look at last season stats, they're the exact same. I mean, they're like he had a 0.5 point increase, a 0.3 assist increase, a 0.1 rebound increase, um, 0.04 to three point percentage. He actually was a 51% field goal shooter last year. So like started in 77 games, um, only missed four games on the season. And I don't mean it to be like, I'm done with Jay Sean Tate. I'm just done with um, kind of expecting him to turn into almost like, you know, I've com I compare him a lot to Julius Randle where Julius Randle used to not have a shot like whatsoever. Once he developed his shot, obviously he's a lot taller, a lot bigger than Jay Sean, but once he developed a shot, he became pretty much in unstoppable, most improved player. Um, you know, obviously playoffs were a different story for him last season, but like, you know, he had a huge, huge increase. And with a guy like Jay Sean Tate, 26 years old, um, you know, played four years of college, played two years overseas, and now has played two years in the NBA, I feel like next year is kind of a very big make or break for him. Like, is he going to develop a shot? Is he going to develop a consistent shot outside of the paint? Is he going to develop a three-point shot? Um, unless he gets like his assist numbers up or his rebound numbers up, I would imagine as far as long-term outlooks as, go, as starters go, he's probably not a part of it. The issue with Jay Sean Tate at the three spot is he can't shoot. And then the issue with him at the four spot is he's just like a little undersized. And, you know, the ball should be in Kevin's hands. The ball should be in Jalen's hands, not... Jay Sean Tate's hands. So when you pair him with a big uh, like Christian Wood, who you know isn't really making players around him better, it's definitely a lot more difficult. And we saw Jay Sean Tate struggle mightily in games where we had a starting lineup of Kevin, Jalen, Jay Sean at the three, Christian at the four, and then Daniel Tice at the five. And once Tice was uh, traded away, there was a lot more. You know, the offense definitely flowed a little bit better, but. As far as Jay Sean goes, the reason I value him so much is because, you know, after next season, let's say he puts up kind of similar stats as this year and last year, where there's no evident um, increase, I would go ahead as far to say as put him on the bench as like a utility player, you know, literally like a utility player, maybe not necessarily like a six man, but more of a seventh man, eighth man rotation, pay him some money, you know, I don't anticipate his contract being more than like $12 million at the absolute most per season. Um, I would I would anticipate like right now it's probably a little bit more like $10 million. Kind of depends on how the Houston Rockets draft as well. So keep that in mind. That's going to impact him. But defensively, he's great. Like Jay Sean Tate definitely improved on the defensive end this season. And he was already a very solid defender. He can score in the post. He can guard in the post. He can guard a multitude of different players, different positions. So I see Jay Sean's long-term value because, you know, let's say Houston had a championship caliber team, a guy who hustles hard, a guy who plays hard, isn't selfish, and can play defense and guard multiple positions. That's a championship level role player. Like, that's the player you want on your basketball team. So I don't want to move on from Jay Sean Tate, but I kind of want to start looking in other directions as far as starting goes. But next season, I would say it's pretty make or break as far as, like, is he going to be a part of the starting lineup for the Houston Rockets moving forward? And also, we're going to see, I mean, if he has a bad year, it's going to kind of help the Rockets out in free agency uh, as far as value and contract goes. But if he has a good season, uh, the Houston Rockets, like, I'm talking like 15 I'm talking like 15, 6, and 4, 15, 6, and 3, something like that. Um, 
Houston has a situation they need to figure out and we'll kind of know a lot more of this next season but I would put Jay Sean's I don't think he played bad enough to constitute a, like a full-on C, but I would definitely give him a B minus, and I think you could argue maybe even a C plus, but I'd probably go ahead and give him like an 80%. So that's it for today, man. Drop your Jay Shante player grade down below. If you have a recommendation for who you want me to do next, let me know, and uh, hit the like button, hit that sub button as always. I'll see you guys later.